So what are you doing this evening? I don't know. I, I don't have any small talk. I didn't become a developer to do small talk. <laughs> It's literally why I became a developer, because I can't. Maybe we can sneak out and just replace ourselves. <laughs> with... And action. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, it's the first API. That's what I want to say. It's a detection observer. It's the first API I've heard of that can penetrate iframes in a way, because it can track your visibility even if you're inside an iframe. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of APIs that do s that give you information about iframes. There's like, uh, the ancestor origins property that will, as an iframe, tell you what the origins of the pair oh, of iframes are. Oh, I didn't know are. that one. Interesting. That's, that's a security feature. But as you say, in Section Observer, why do you know so much about this? Look who wrote the article. That it's was Mr. me. Mr. Surma. Yes, as you say, the intersection observer will tell you when an element, um, oh, so you've got oh. a lovely demo here, yeah. is, is visible or not, and it works. So even in if an you can scroll the iframe out of view, or you can scroll the content inside the iframe out of view, and both times the intersection observer will be able to tell you if you are visible, which was made for stuff like ads who want to know if they're actually visible so you get paid for it. Yes, or similar uh, lazy loading. Lazy loading as uh, well, true. Stop starting animations until they come into view. Yeah. It's it's one of my favorite additions to the web. Actually, like, it makes a bunch of stuff a well, lot simpler. Apparently, Resize Observer is better. But... Resize Observer is amazing. I think this came out a year previously, didn't ah, it? So why. it didn't make it into our competition. If you don't know what we're talking about, watch our HTTP two hundred three Christmas twenty eighteen feature rundown. You're great at these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to get those likes and subscribes. Right, Intersection Observer is looking at solving the clickjacking problem. Cool. All right. So this is in Intersection Observer v2, uh, which is in Canary right now, behind right. the experimental web platform features flag. OK. OK. So this is what Intersection Observer looks like mm -hmm. right now. You and I, do you know what? I don't like this API pattern. No, I'm not a big fan. It's super weird. It feels Especially inside with the, out. Yeah, like and you, you have the always have the entries, but most of the time you only get one, one entry. One entry. Yeah, yeah. I, I find it a really weirdly designed API, but we'll gloss over that. Uh, this is. The new bit. Ah, so options. In the options, you say you want to track visibility. Now, Intersection Observer calls this thing visibility. Which is what the original Intersection Observer already. Yes. So the I, I think intersection this is badly named. The, I mean, the Intersection Observer is kind of correctly in both bad name because, yes, it tracks intersections with your viewport, <laughs> yeah. but it's also kind of called visibility. But that, that, to be fair, you can use intersection observer to track actual intersections even off screen by changing what it is relative to. So fair game, but still, it's very confusing. What, this is now called visibility. Yeah, what this means, and I think they might rename it, but they're kind of like, I said, I think this is badly named. And they said, well, what name should it be? And I went, obscuredness. I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said something like that, De definitely not being click jacked. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know. Um, you have to supply the, the delay property, because this is a more expensive yeah. bit of computation. You have to give it a delay, which just sort of debounces the amount of times you hear about it. Why do I have to give it? Why does this set? Uh, like, how can, low can I go? You, that is as low as you can go. OK. 100 is low you can go. You can go higher. But 100 so is But you can be nice and tell the browser, I don't need to know this often. Like, yeah, this is low priority. Time. OK, just, that's actually I, kind I of nice. mind. And then. In your doodah thingy bob callback <laughs> here, in the entries, it tells you is visible and it will and give you that callback. It's obscured. It it, yes, it has, well, the opposite. It's, it's not, not obscured. obscured. Yes, see, it's a great API. <laughs> so, although it kind of, I think it's is really good. Like the, the naming aside, the functionality is really good. And what I'm going to do is enable it. All right, right, right. There we All go. All right, cool. OK, so now it's the same as before. There's just a bit of extra code running in here that knows when it it's yeah. being mm -hmm. jacked or whatever. So you can see I can sort of move this around, and er everything's All fine. cool, not obscure. Uh, so I'm going to try the hack now, where I'm going to put the button over there, and I'm going to change the opacity. And as soon as I change the opacity, it's like, nah. Can tell for sure, I guess. They're being conservative about this, aren't they? Absolutely. And that's what the aim of this is right now, is to, it doesn't care so much if it if there's false positives. Yeah. It, they don't want false negatives, right? Yeah. They, 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 they want, it wants to so play on the same side. They want to basically side. have 100% of success rate of, they want to get all the obscured cases at the cost of maybe saying you are obscured when you're not actually obscured. Yep, yep. And the same goes for things like filters. So if I bring the, the, the blur up here, they, this, nope. as soon as it's blurred to any degree, because you know you don't know what that button actually means, but it knows that it's been okay. messed around with. And same here, as soon as there's an intersection, it's like, nope. Uh, so you can't do the trick where you encourage someone to yeah. click there. Uh, and one thing that I thought was quite nice, and I'm going to move that to there. If I apply some blur to this, you'll see eventually, eventually, as it gets blurry, it, it triggers. Ah, because like there's a tiny bit of blur overlapping into. 
Yes, so it's not just intersecting at a layout level, it's intersecting at a paint level. That's really good. Um, and that's because this element is, is appearing on top. Um, yeah. But as soon as I make that one appear on top, it, it's fine, because it's on the top. Cool. Level. And yeah, that's, that's really it. Um, that's really interesting. So it, and it's, it's designed to detect things like clip path, you know, scrolling, anything that would be. Yeah, I'm guessing they uh, they spend a good amount of time going through all the possible ways you can mess yes. around with obscuring and hiding and pretending to be there when you're actually not. And there's more work to do. It's it's still a work in progress. Yeah. Um, I filed a few bugs recently where I found someone's like, oh, I can actually do this, and it doesn't realize. <laughs> um, so those will be fixed before launching. But the idea is like we can start bringing back like this behavior that we used to have before we Actual figured out it was composable. Widgets. Yes, so you can click like, it will actually work, or even like the Buy Now button, and it will yeah. do the right thing. You know that you can detect if this is a legit click or not. Exactly. So, And, and that's that's the important detail, is the owner of the button knows what's happening to it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, so it's still the, the responsibility of the embeddee to you know make sure the click is legit. Yes. But now they can at a reliable level, because before that, this was practically impossible. Like, no way to tell if there was content on top, I think. I exactly. Yes, there was no way of doing this beforehand. This is entirely new. So you said so this is in Canary right now. In Canary right now. Do we have um, any any signals from other people? I feel like this is something that historically Apple would be interested in, in securing these kind of things on the web. There's definitely interest. Um, it's something that the owners of these kind of buttons are very interested yeah, in. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so it's, it's sort of popular with them. Um, I, right now, I think the other browsers are happy for Chrome to experiment and yeah. to prove that the API can actually work and be done and be fast, because you don't want just using this API to break the performance of the web. That's true. Uh, and that's what we're working on now. I have no more content. It's all done. That's it. <laughs> Sheet of paper, done. <laughs> that was it. Tablet, I mean, what, what, did you, what did you want? Another half an hour episode. <laughs> Yeah, tell me about something. <laughs> he doesn't say cut. What do we do? 